Hi guys and welcome to this video, which is the start of a new chapter of work about combining geometric growth and decay. Thank you very much for joining me, really good to see you as normal. Now, actually it's going to be quite a short video. Why? Because it's sort of recapping all of the work we did in our previous chapter, but it's leading us in to a lot of our financial maths. Yes, our financial maths section is part of the core data for further maths and is going to be a sack pretty much all on its own. You need to know how to use your calculator to decode the questions to take out the right information and realistically it's not that difficult. Financial Solver, there's a section on your calculator, is phenomenal. But we have to ease our way back in just to remember the difference between geometric growth and decay and what that's all about. Now if you haven't already done so and you're new to my channel, hi, welcome, thank you very much. Can you subscribe by clicking there's a doohickey being pointed out in the corner now. Um, basically, never going to be rich, never going to be famous. People keep saying to me, enable ads. Well, sadly I need 4,000 hours of watch view time and that's just not going to happen. But by subscribing, you let me know you're watching and that actually me creating these videos is worthwhile. So thank you very much. I keep giving up uh, creating these videos, but every now and again people just turn and say, hey, can you record some more? and I come back. There's also a website, masquerooo.com, where you can subscribe for absolutely for free or sign up for free, and all the videos are linked by textbook and chapter, and there are downloadable notes as well. All right, so combining geometric growth and decay. If you remember back to sort of the previous chapter of work, the previous lessons, we came up with formulas that had V0 as our starting value, and we could, if we knew a rule, create each successive term by taking the previous term, multiplying it by some sort of percentage multiplier, and the more complicated questions, adding or taking away a regular payment. All right, so basically this formula, V0 is our starting value. That's what we opened our investment account with or what loan we took out. Uh, R is our percentage multiplier as a decimal, all right? So 1.1 means 10% more. Vn means take my current term. Vn plus one is my next term. And then this plus or minus D is uh, a fixed payment I'm going to make. Now we don't always in previous chapters make a payment, um, but it's there if we need to. Now the important thing here is this plus minus thing. It's a wonderful way in mathematics to enable us to have two formulas written as one. So realistically speaking, that means that we've got V of N plus one is equal to R times V of N plus D, and V of N plus one is equal to R times V of N and minus D. Now obviously in this situation, we're adding something into our account, so probably it's growing, minus D, we're taking it off. So this may well be for a loan, this last one here may well be for a loan, I'm having some sort of interest added, but then I'm taking off a payment. Here, maybe for an investment, for example, where I'm being, uh, where interest is being added, and I'm putting more money in, for example. Let's look at two examples from the Cambridge uh, Further Mass textbook. Thank you very much, Cambridge, for allowing me to use your examples. You guys absolutely rock. Write down the sequence generated by the recurrence relation there. Now, when it says write down the sequence generated by recurrence relation, I can't imagine it means all of it. But if we decode the formula, V0 is three, and it says to get to our next term, so V of n plus one, to get to the next term, do four times my previous term and subtract one from the answer. So if we have V0 is equal to three, then V1 is gonna be, well, times it by four, so three times four, and then subtract one, which is gonna give me 11. My next term is gonna be four times my previous, which was 11, subtract one, which is 44 minus one, which is 43. Uh, the reason I took a long time thinking about that was because I was wondering whether I should show you how to use the calculator. And then V3, uh, let's actually write that as a V. So V3 would in that case be four times 43 minus one. And yes, let's fire up a calculator. Four times 43 minus one gives me the staggering value of 171. Now, Yes, I can use my calculator for this, if you remember, because it is awesome. All we need to do is put its start term in and press exe. Now that's gonna remember what my previous value is. To get to my next value, I'm gonna do four. Sorry, my calculator keeps moving. I'm going to do four. I'm gonna times that by my previous answer, which is ANS on my calculator, and subtract one. Now, believe it or not, that's now gonna create all of my sequence for me. So 11, yep. 43, yep, 171, and all I'm doing is just hitting EXE every single time. So there we go, that's how you can use your calculator to do it, 
and pencil and paper methods. In an exam, they'd probably ask you to do the next three numbers in the sequence. I can't imagine they'd want you to go on forever and ever and ever. And the next example, uh, the number of trout in a fish farm pond after n months, Tn. Now notice here they're trying to trick us. We get so used to, in further maths, just being given Vn or, you know, V of n plus 1, that when they throw the letters, it tends to throw us. That V, don't care where it comes from. The important thing is the little n and the little n plus 1 can be modelled using the following recurrence relationship. There we go. So T0. Well, V0 meant the first term, T0 means the first term. T of n plus 1, the next term, is equal to 1.1 times Tn minus 3000. Don't worry about the T, it's just the same. Use the recurrence relation to determine the number of trout in the pond after two months. So N stands for the number of months, and that's really, really important here. So after two months, we are looking for T2. So we have T0, it was given as 10,000. So T1 is going to be given by 10,000, multiplied by 1.1. Again, don't worry about the order I've done it. That's the same. Minus 3,000. Let's fire up my calculator. So 10, 1, 2, 3. Multiply that by 1.1 and subtract from that 3, 1, 2, 3. Hit 8, core is 8,000. So T1 is equal to 8,000. How do we get to T2? Well, now 8,000. Sorry, that should be, yes, 8 thousand times 1.1 minus 3,000 gives me the grand total of, so I'm going to times that by 1.1, and I'm going to minus from that 3, 1, 2, 3, hit enter, gives me 5,800. Now again, I could have done that in my calculator relatively quickly. I could have put 10,000 in as my start value, and then I just put in my formula, which if you remember is going to be 1.1, multiplied by my previous value, which is ANS, and then I'm going to subtract from that 3, 1, 2, 3. So there is the end of the second month, sorry, the first month, and there is the end of the second month. And we get the same values, which is always good. After how many months will there be no lit trout left in the pond? Right, so T3, at the end of the third month, there is going to be 3,380. At the end of the fourth month, there's going to be 718 and at the end of the fifth month there is going to be minus 2210.2 so there we go so it says after how many months will there be no trout left in the pond well we can't say four months because at four months there are still 718 left so at the end of the fifth month there is effectively going to be none left. Okay, I know it says minus 2,210, your calculator's doing all these random things, but this is where you have to interpret the answer. Well, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of this very short video. Thank you very much for watching. We have combined geometric growth and decay. We've done a real world example, and we've made sure that we understood the plus and minus thing to allow us to understand the formula. Okay, thank you very much. If you haven't already subscribed, can you do so by clicking that little doohickey over there and let your friends know. Greatly appreciated. I look forward to seeing you in another video, which will follow quite soon. Don't forget MathsGuru.com where these are all sorted. Stay safe. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.